Hello my friends, John LaRuffa here with another Straight Up Solo, and in this episode, I'm going to be taking a look at a game that's a little bit older at this point, but I just love. And I have not done a Straight Up Solo on it, and that is Newton. Let us take a look at this, I'm just going to spoil it right now, great solo game, um, at least if you like those kinds of things. And I'll tell you what I feel, how it plays, how I feel about it, and why you may or may not like it as well. Okay, so let's begin with an overview of what the game is, what's on the board, how you play, and then I'll kind of show you a couple of example turns, and then we'll uh, take a look at what I think of it. So, the game always has these two main boards on it, this travel board over here with kind of like southern, um, southwestern Europe on it, and then this uh, technology tree or discovery board or whatever. It's not really a technology tree. It's more, I mean, it's supposed to be because it's a tree, but... It's really like more like a idea discovery board. And that has two separate tracks. This tree track, which you can see over here, where you can move um, your different students up different lanes to get bonuses. And then this work track over here, where the farther you down you go, you get money as you travel. And then you also get some of these other things when you land on it. So for instance, like this is like an instant upgrade to your workbench. Um, this is other things. That's like another student at five bucks. If you land in this spot, you get to get one of these end game um, scoring bonus cards plus something that it lets you do either instantly. Um, in fact, all these are instant actions, but sometimes they have books on them, which I'll tell you about that. And if you get all the way to the end of some of these tracks, if you have a certain number of books um, in your workbench, then you can put a guy on these things for end game scoring. Uh, similarly, over here, um, as you travel around, you unlock different spaces. On this board, both you get bonuses and unlocks, and these unlocks allow you then to fill in spots on your main board with these little books to help um, score at the end of the round. So for instance, if I wanna fill in this spot, I'd have to have three blue books um, out here, which I'll kind of show you how that develops in a second. And then I have to take an action to be able to do it. And if I can fill in all these spots with books, then I get that amount of points at the end of each round. There are six rounds in this game. Now, I also have mixed in um, one of the expansions, well, the only expansion I think that came with, that's out so far, came out in 2019, um, that allows you to have some of these cards right here that you can buy for a lot of money in most cases that give you an instant situation. And then when you use them, they you lose this instance um, like for instance, if you lose this book um, being open to you, but then you score some kind of points depending on the condition. Okay, so the, the main crux of this game is playing these cards from your hand, <clears throat> excuse me, into your workbench. And I have played through three full rounds of this game, I'm about ready to enter round four. Um, and basically what happens is, is at your turn, you play a card, you take the main action, which is represented down here. The strength of that main action um, is modified by however many leftover other additional main actions you've had from previous rounds or other things that you had in your board. You can also pay money to improve that main action by one level, one time. Um, and then you do the action. And then you leave behind sometimes some books, like I said, that unlock or help you to put point things down later over here. Or some instants like this, where it's a book and an instant dollar, a book, or you get a potion. The potions do a variety of things. You can spend one of them in a turn to um, count for a book. You can spend three of them to just allow you to put something on a space over here, even if you don't fulfill the condition at all. So what are the different actions? Okay, so first action I'll explain is this one, where you basically move your marker on the work track and collect income. That's probably the simplest one. And your level one, if you place just the card here that has this, and you have no other icons below, it would just be one move. But in this case, if I place this here, it would be three moves. So let me just demonstrate that. So one, two, three, that's level three. You can only go to a maximum of three levels. You can't, even if you want to pay coins, you can't up it any further. At least I don't believe you can. Um, and so then you would move one, two, three three on this workbench track or this work track and get three coins. You're going to use the coins for um, these specific situations here, buying an extra student, buying a potion one time in a turn, upgrading your level by one, one time in a turn, um, or um, being able to 
add extra cards to this offer area right here, which I'll show you uh, right now. So another action you can do is add to your hand. To add to your hand, you play a card with this symbol on it. So when I play this card, and again, that was all my—that was a full turn right there. I just did a full turn. Here's another turn. So I'm going to play this card. This is going to be out there now for any of these conditions. And I'm going to take this study action here. So one, two, three. I could take up to a level three card, which would be anything from this area right here. Okay. And these cards are also part of the expansion. So you see some of these cards that may not exist in the main game. I think actually all these are in the base game. But uh, there are some extra cards that give you either or bonuses down here or other things. So, like I just said, in fact, I don't think this one's in the main game uh, right here. Yeah, that's a, that's an expansion. You rotate it around. Um, so, anyway, I will uh, go ahead and choose one of these. Now, I need a lot of books, a lot of different colored books, as you can tell. I have filled in a lot of those things. So, I'm going to choose this one. I'm going to choose it because it gives me an explore action, which will help me get more stuff out on the explore board. And I'll have two books when I do it. So let's talk about the explore action. And again, that was my turn. Very simple, very quick. Um, let's do this explore action on this turn. So I'm going to put this card out, okay? And I have one of these and only one of these. So you can see I just have a level one out here. No more of those areas that uh, I can add. So I would just be able to move one space. Now, which space do I want to move? Well, I could either go backwards, back to track, which doesn't make any sense. I could pay three on my way over here, which may be helpful, or I could come down here. Now, the signs that I'm working on right now are um, pretty open. I've got one book over here. So again, it's most of these things. So I kind of want to move back up, perhaps. So, why don't, but, 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 this is already filled in. So why don't I go with this, this route right here? I'll pay three. I'll move my guy one space because it's a level one. I'll go ahead and pay three. One, two, three. And then I get to place one of my cubes over here on that spot, showing that I have now been to that spot. So what does that do? Well, that allows me to fulfill the condition that if I want to place a book on here, I can do it. Well, let's go ahead and do just that. So the action I need is this. Oh, and by the way, in your starting hand, you do get this uh, wild action right here, which you can always take. Um, it counts as a while when you take it, but if you bury it, it doesn't do you any good, so you don't want to bury it. And I'll talk to you about burying in a second. So, here we go. Let's go ahead and play this card down for my next turn. This one gets me an instant potion. Why don't I take that right now? Plus a couple of other cards, but most importantly, it allows me to do a book action. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, yeah, a bookshelf action over here. So, I'm going to go ahead and, and I don't remember what the names of these actions really are guys it could be study or something like that I'm not sure I'm sorry so this could be a one or a two so that means anything in this column for level one anything in this column for level two or I could pay two dollars which I have a lot of to do something in level three well I just told you I wanted to do this that's why I went over here so let's go ahead and do just that let's take one of these next bookcase or um, tiles over here and cover up that spot now if it can get this covered before the end of the round I'll be able to score Two points there. Also, by removing um, some of these, every time you remove three of those bookcases, you get an instant bonus here. And they can add up. So, for instance, that one's a potion. That one's, um, let's see, that is $4 right there, I believe. It might be, yeah, $4. This is to unlock one of those endgame cards for you. And then if you get all of them gone, it's eight points, which is a lot. Okay, so I've taken that. I have one more turn to do. And what would be really nice is if I could do one more bookshelf action like I was talking to you about so that I can unlock some more scoring for myself at the end. Why don't I do that? Oh, well, I don't have any more book um, actions over here, but I could do a jester action. And I'm going to do that unless I can think of something smarter to do. Uh, and, ooh, I just saw something smarter. So this is a little combo. I can go ahead and take the tech, the tech tree action over here. I'm going to play this card right here, um, right there, okay? So that means one, two, three. I can move three spots on this little space right here. One, two, three. It gives me instantly $2, plus I can instantly take a level three book action. Well, just what I need over here. Now, is there anything else that makes sense? I feel like I'm a little bit wasting that action by doing that, but 
Uh, to be honest, I want those points because the one thing in this game is you have to kind of get out early because points are compounding. The more you unlock every you know, round, you're going to rescore a lot of those things every time. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that so I can unlock this right now. And I had the blue book right there. There was the condition. So there we go. Now my round is over. After the end of the round, you have to select one of the cards you play and you have to bury it under here for the symbol uh, to be permanent later on. And I think what I'm going to bury is probably going to be, um, I guess I'm going to bury this card. I don't love doing it, but I, I really want to save the other ones that I have. So we're going to bury that. That means if I ever took the worker action from now on, it'll be three. And again, uh, I'll check before I do my review to see if there's a, uh, if there's a way that you can, um, you know, go over the limit, but I'm pretty sure three is the limit and that's it. I'll check. Okay, so I bury that. I take the rest of the cards and put them back in my hand. And I make a mess while doing it. I'm holding the camera here. All right, so those go back in the old hand. And I can use those next time, okay? Um, then I have to score points. So I look to see which ones score every at the end of any round. Well, I have a two-pointer that I picked up earlier in the game. So that's two points here. I've met the condition for this. That's another two points for four. And I've met the conditions for this. That's another two points. That's six. But I don't have any of the other ones completely full. So I'm going to score six points right there, okay, which is 14. And I'm actually off to a very slow start. Um, so this game will not be a high-scoring game. I can assure you that. It kind of took too long getting out of the gate. And then the last thing you do is you refresh these. You, you discard all three of these. You put them in the, under the pile. And then you go ahead and redraw three of them. Okay, and I'll let you use your imagination on that goes. Uh, and then that's it. And you play again. You play six total rounds. At the end of the sixth round, you count up your score, which for the most part will be stagnant. The only thing you're going to add to it are some of these kinds of scores. Like, like I said, if you unlock these, these are end game scores that vary. And you can unlock some of these throughout the game. You have to score them. One of the things I want to point out, too, is this board is highly modular. So when you set it up, you're going to put a lot of different tiles down. They're going to go in different spots everywhere. They're also going to go different tiles in different spots here. There's different bonus tiles you move over to get here. So it's extremely modular. The game itself, um, the setup is varied, so that really helps with the replayability uh, because all the games will feel different. And, of course, when you have a card draw like that, that's also very, very uh, modular and it's completely random, but the randomness works really well um, in this kind of tactical game. I would definitely say that this is not a random game, so to speak. Yeah, you could sometimes not get the cards you want, but there are ways to mitigate that. If you need to draw extra cards, you can spend money. Um, you can build your hand the way you want from the kind of strategy that you're going for. So if you want to focus on you know, this tech tree over here, so to speak, I keep saying that, um, then you can put more of those kind of cards in there. If you want to close down a lot of these then you could put a lot of library cards in there and so there's lots of different things if you want to spend a lot of time traveling around and unlocking different bonuses you could do that i'd say that you know your best bet in this game like any good solid euro game is to focus on one or two probably two aspects okay and really maximize that maybe three if you do a little bit of everything you're going to have a score like i'm about to end up right now um it'd be mediocre you really want to be um having very efficient, very uh, strong turns to score well. All right, and that is the overview of this game. Okay, I looked up that rule, and I was incorrect. You actually can go further than level three on your actions. It wouldn't make any sense to do so buying cards or placing in your bookshelf because you can't buy, you only ever buy one card, you only ever place once in your bookshelf on a turn. But if you wanted to go further on the work track, further on the technology tree track, or further in the world track, you could bump those up by using a combination of extra symbols, maybe the jester and two coins. So you'd go up to four or five, maybe even six if you were really, really lucky. So you, uh, you can do that. Also, as usual, as a plug, please like and subscribe to this video if you haven't done so already, as I really would appreciate the additional subscribers. Okay, so what do I think of this game as a solo game? Well, first and foremost, I've only ever played it solo. I've played it 10 times solo, and I love it. I love this game. It's a great Euro game. It, it feels it feels thinky. It's got puzzly action. The way you save the cards to improve things um, really scratches a nice Euro itch. If you like Euro games, you're going to love this one. The lack of player inter interaction in the solo 
doesn't really matter so much. In fact, there are no rule changes between the solo game and the multiplayer game, period. They just give you a scoring chart at the end, um, you know, show how well you do. And I've done okay. I think I've gotten two-thirds up. To, I think my top score is an 86 in this game, which puts you about two-thirds of the way up the track. So there's room for improvement. Um, but sometimes you just have a game where you, you get off to a slow start, like the one I was starting to show you right there. I'm probably not going to do very well. Um, and so that's one of the things about it that also makes it challenging that, you know, it's not, it's not necessarily a point salad. It's an exponential point engine. Okay. So yeah, you might get points for doing lots of little things, so to speak, but I wouldn't say this is a salad game at all. Um, you really need to focus your efforts to score well here. Because every time you end a round, you score all the points that you've unlocked from the previous round and the previous round before that, etc., etc., etc. So that means that to score well, you need to ramp up a good, consistent engine where you're building upon your previous successes, which I think um, is, you know, a very, very fun kind of mechanic. I like that. You see that in other Euro games uh, to a much greater extent in things like Russian Railroads, for instance. Uh, but this game, again, has that kind of feel to it. So it is not a point salad um, type of game where you get two points here, one point there, two points here, one point. It, it has a little bit of that instant, instantaneous point thing. You can kind of help that a bit. But the majority of, your, of how you're going to score really well is through clever play and um, especially those, you know, putting the, the right combos together. Um, I like that there's a variable setup. So every time you play it, it does feel different. That being said, it is the same game, so to speak, every time you play. You make some choices in the beginning to say strategic, but you're not going to have... The cards that come out aren't going to be so different, in fact, that one game is going to feel completely different from another. You know, it'll have different nuances and different aspects, but it's not like... I mean, even with the expansion you add that in, that adds some more variety and some more... Um, uh, variability on what you can do with some of the cards so for instance one of the extra cards here i'll show you is one from the from the uh, expansion where you play it for the the study action to get new cards but then when you put it face down you plug it in here and then if you take a uh, technology action uh in the in that specific slot later on in the game you're allowed to then do an instant action with the book so it is kind of cool that they, uh, um, I'm sorry, it's the other way around. I was looking at the camera backwards. If you take a book action, at least level one or more, then you can take an instant technology action. And so that that does change uh, the game a bit and what you're doing. Okay, so there's that. But it is, um, it's not like one expansion or that expansion or something like that really changes the approach. Um Overall, I really, really enjoy it. Things you wouldn't enjoy about it, well, the theme is is very, very pasted on. There is no real theme here. Yeah, you got this idea that you're doing different things. It doesn't matter. It's a it's a it's a pasted on theme. You're not gonna get the feeling of any kind of great discoveries or exploration or anything like that. You're not. Okay? So if you love games for theme, this one is dry. But I don't care because it's an awesome game from a mechanic standpoint and a gameplay standpoint. Um, it also plays extremely fast. You saw how fast I worked out those um, five turns. And I worked them out just, you know, on, with you on the camera here, um, just kind of quickly. Sometimes it's obvious. Sometimes it's a real discussion or thinking, like, oh, I don't know if I should go this way or that way. You know, if I could do that long-term play or am I missing something? Is there a combo hidden somewhere I haven't seen yet? And so it, it's it's not a simple game to play, but I would not say it is heavy it's not rules heavy um it's 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 got some meat on the bone uh, and there could be some ap but you're playing by yourself so who cares uh the, anyway the fact of the matter is is that i really really enjoy this as a solo game and i think that if you like european board games you th that kind of style you will love this game solo um that's my thoughts on it i hope i was helpful i really see very f small negatives right there with the theme most everything else i really enjoy and uh check it out see if you like it most of the time you can this has been it's been around for a while so you should be able to find it pretty easily although i think that expansion might be a little elusive expansion is not essential um not at all it, it gives you some extra variety in the cards it gives you a couple of those little tiles you can play but you can get a great experience with the base game. And if you can't find that, you've got lots of games to play before it would really get stale. You say, well, I really need to kind of beef it up with something else. All right. Thanks again for watching, everybody. I hope you have a great time playing whatever you decide to play next. Take it easy.